Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and I've been really busy recently building the new Diagon Alley set, and I think it's time that we started putting some of it into Brick Nottingham. Now before we get too deep into Diagon Alley and uh, all the fun that that represents, I did want to give you a quick update on Fast Food Corner, my Lego Ideas submission because the uh, deadline for the second submission period of 2020 has now finished and there are actually 35 uh, successful submissions in this group, uh, which is an amazing number really. Usually there's about sort of 7 to 10 or something like that. Uh, the previous round was a record uh, of 26, but obviously 35 is way more than that. And I guess we can thank Lockdown for that, that people have had a lot more time to uh, focus on their own Lego designs and looking and supporting other Lego designs. But for Fast Food Corner specifically, it feels like a very long time ago. In fact, it was uh, very late April 2020 when I uh, submitted the ideas submission. Uh, and then very quickly, 47 days is all it took to get the 10,000 votes it required, which meant it qualified uh, in early June, which was right at the beginning of this uh, session of four months. And now we have even more waiting to do because the uh, previous group will get announced soon, which ones have won, which ones will get made into real life sets. And that's when the judging of Fast Food Corner along with the other 34 will actually just start. So yeah, it really does seem like a bit of a delay. Uh, so the results of the session that I'm in will actually be very early in the new year in 2021, believe it or not. So anyway, I thought I'd give you that update just so uh, you knew because I was getting increasing questions of people wondering what had happened to it and where it was. Uh, I don't know a lot more than you, obviously, at this stage, uh, and there's still plenty of time to wait, unfortunately. But I'm looking forward to the announcement of the winners of the last round, and even the round that I'm in as well, really, because there's some fantastic sets in there. Uh, the competition is very high. Uh, I don't think necessarily Fast Food Corner is going to do that well. I like it very much, but I think largely because of the fact that it's a modular and Lego have never really done a sort of standard modular that would compete with their own ones before. Uh, but also, as I say, the quality is just so high that, well, fingers crossed, you never know, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So on to today and these four wonderful builds that come in an absolutely packed set. I mean, this thing comes in a huge, huge box and you really expect it's going to have a lot of air inside. And then when you open up the flap, you see that the Lego is almost up to the very brim. I mean, this is very piece intensive and there's some really interesting build styles like on all these bay windows and things that really make it very interesting indeed. Also, the interiors are absolutely in my style. They're full and packed and stacked, so there's very little to do in some cases to improve them. So I can very heartily recommend this set. Clearly it is very, very expensive. And I do appreciate that not everyone can afford that sort of thing. Uh, it's only made a lot easier for me by the fact that I have your support, both by way of my Patreon supporters and also people who use my Lego link, which is in the description below. And if you were to buy this set, and do it by clicking on my link, then I would make a small percentage as commission, which helps me buy these sort of things to show you and would also help support the channel. So if you are going to the Lego store to buy anything, do click on my link to make that purchase. It will make absolutely no difference to you, but will support me. So thanks for that small plug. Uh, but let's get on looking at all of these one by one, just in a small amount of detail. I'm not gonna do a huge review. Uh, and then we can start putting them upstairs. Right, so apologies to Harry Potter fans. I don't know all of the Harry Potter stuff by any means, and I'm going to get some pronunciations, names, and all sorts of things wrong, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, but this is the first one of the four that I built uh, because it was my favourite looking, and I'm very, very happy with it. Um, the two sort of double height bay windows with these lovely uh, trans yellow windows just look fantastic. And the dark blue on this... Um, uh, light bluish grey backdrop as well. Just looks fantastic. I think all these uh, builds are going to fit fantastically into my old town. I am hoping to get all four crammed in in all those spaces that I've got uh, around the castle to the left and right, right the way up to the palace cinema. 
I think there's enough space. It might require some modifications. It might mean I have to actually split some of these uh, builds that have got two elements to it into two separate sections. I don't know yet. We'll find that out when we get upstairs. But um, this requires very little modification indeed. Uh, in that this is a pen shop, and yes, it's sort of more quill type pens, but maybe a really traditional pen shop would still stock those just for uh, collectors or something. So what I could do is put a few pens in here as well to just make it a little bit more modern. Uh, Ollivander's in the films and books is a wand shop, so I don't really want a wand shop. But I mean, from the outside perspective, it could be selling absolutely anything and it doesn't really matter. Uh, I've left off one sticker deliberately, which said wands. Um, so I think it's completely usable as is. Uh, I may de-owl it just to remove the two owls and another third one up here, just to make it look less uh, owl infested. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think it's really good. And once I've Legoed, uh, Lego yellow skinned up this proprietor, who's called Garrick Ollivander, I think he'll actually be fantastic as the shopkeeper who maybe has come out to sort of sweep his step or something like that. Uh, so the interiors are very packed and stacked, as I said, just the way I like them. Some living quarters up here, all loads of pens there. Living quarters potentially up here with some store storage space there. Also underneath this stair, which folds out. Now, I probably will have to put in a piece just to hold this in place because I don't want this flinging back if it's next to the train line uh, and causing a massive accident there. But otherwise, I think it's absolutely fine. I'm probably going to get rid of the Technic bricks along the bottom uh, just because I don't like them visible when they aren't being used. I do that on all my modular buildings as well and hopefully I'll be able to cover this side which is pretty unattractive compared with say this one which looks pretty good. So yeah virtually no change is required on here uh, but it does raise the concept that if this is going to be facing away from us in the Lego room and I can't lift off entire floors in sections as I can with some of my buildings, whether it's worth my, worthwhile me even sort of populating the insides with anything in particular, because you're just not going to be able to see it. Uh, I like the fact you can see stuff through the windows and so on, but there's not really much point me adding sort of modern pens to this one or something just to make it look uh, a little bit more realistic when, well, the windows are so sort of small you can barely notice. So... Yeah, I might just leave Ollivander's, for example, as a generic shop that sells stuff, uh, which is absolutely fine. Uh, what I could do is try and make this sort of quasi-modular uh, by putting in brakes and tiles and things so you could kind of lift off one floor at a time. But it's going to be really difficult to do around some of these more complicated window features where the structure really is dependent on the uh, current build technique. So... That might be a bit of a fool's errand, but anyway, number one, fantastic. Two thumbs up. Now, the second one I built was this one, and that's probably for obvious reasons, just because it's got wonderful color scheme, these wonderful windows I was very interested in. They're actually uh, one by six by five panels, if you're interested, with this printing on. Uh, and Flourish and Blots, I thought, really needed very little modification as well. It's clearly a bookstore, but I think of it as being kind of like a second-hand bookstore, even though we've got kind of a book launch here. Of You get lots of copies of this, which is very nice, of Gilderoy Lockhart's book, Magical Me. So there's two there that I've just given her to hold for now. There's the man himself and another one in the window. So even though we've got a bookshop in Brick Nottingham, probably in a lot of cities that are well built up in Lego, because we've had the recent one, of course, Birch Books in set 10270, but... I figure a town like Brick Nottingham that's full of people and full of uh, highly educated people at that would easily be able to support two bookshops. And this being kind of a more traditional one with maybe more secondhand books as well would uh, fit in very well. So that is absolutely great. Love these little sort of um, gargoyle type details on the sides here. Not so unattractive on the side. Uh, and then we've got this, which is um, Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlour. Uh, and this is all right as well. I've probably already got quite a lot of ice cream stuff. So I was thinking I'd probably turn this into a cafe. It's not too ice creamy on the inside. We've just got some glasses and so on and one with some ice cream in. There's the inside of the bookstore, by the way. Absolutely great. This uh, 
staircase kind of folds down like that. I'll fold it up because it will need to stay out of the way of trains. Um, and some living space up here, which is very nice. So I think I will change that into a cafe. And I was thinking I might even call it Florius Cafe because uh, I got the little stickers for that from set 76129. So that might just give it a bit of a name because I don't want to have it all as being the actual Diagon Alley uh, in Brick Nottingham. It's just going to be stores. Uh, and I may get rid of this little sort of 3D sign. I mean, I love 3D signs, don't get me wrong, but these sort of twee little chairs with a table with some ice cream on, I'm not a massive fan of. So, yeah, ideas for that, please. Uh, but I really like the uh, pale yellow colouring of the lower ground floor. And I'll probably add some more tables and chairs outside and hopefully get a bit of a sort of street scene going on as well. But these books are fantastic as well, all sort of lined up. And that's why I think it's definitely more of a used bookstore type feel to it. So this one's got a few more amendments I want to do, like the sign and so on. But again, I really have to do very little. So I love the outside. I love this uh, overhang bay window sort of area. I love this sign. I mean, this sign's incredibly similar to my uh, Crown Pub sign, which is roughly where it's going to be located. So again, two thumbs. Really, really like this build. Okay, on to number three. And this is where the rather interesting, let's say, colours start with this bright pink all over the top floor and kind of in a strip down on just one side there. Uh, instinctively, I'm not a massive fan of that pink colour, but I'm going to try and embrace it and use it somehow to my advantage. So the main build here is the Quality Quidditch Supplies Shop. God, that's hard to say. Quality Quidditch Supplies. Try and say that 10 times quickly. Um, and it's got this absolutely fantastic bay window again with this uh, latticed window. And these ones are actually made out of 1x2x5 clear bricks with printing on the front. And you'll probably be aware of this, but the whole sub-assembly, being the window structure, is sort of hung on these Technic pins, on these one by one bricks, uh, and angles very much kind of towing out at the top. Uh, so it looks even older because of that, because a lot of the old buildings in the UK were built before building regulations back in the uh, sort of 14 to 16 to 1800s. And they often lean in all sorts of bizarre directions, quite frankly. And you sort of look at some of them and wonder how on earth they stay up, but nonetheless. So I'm glad that that's been embraced. Um, and I do have a broomstick in the window, but I think I'm going to remove that because it is visible from the outside and some up here. Uh, and the whatever these are called, beaters, are they? Something like that. Uh, I asked Mrs. Hood and she uh, she informed me because she knows a lot more about this than me. Um, because I don't want this to be a Quidditch shop, which is why I've left off quite a few of the stickers on here and on here. So I've managed to use some of them. So instead of saying quality Quidditch supplies, I've just got quality supplies uh, on this side, for example. So I really like the build very much. I like the colour scheme on this section very much. I just got to decide what this is going to be. So it could be something like a bar, I was thinking, or anything really, restaurant. Maybe a game with some tables outside just to bring it into the street. And then it won't be so important what's on the inside. But the variety and the quality of the build just make this an excellent uh, contribution to Brick Nottingham. Now, the second part to this build is the Daily Prophet, which is obviously the newspaper in uh, the real Diagon Alley. And we've got a nice printed door. We've got a nice, well, lovely stonework door frame there. And we've got this other flappy sign here as well. Now, I find it a bit more confusing on the inside because this clearly goes through to the Daily Prophet and then kind of stops dead because this is still the Quidditch store. So I was thinking that I might uh, kind of link the top floor here which is all pink and all the rest of it with the attic and what have you, as being the uh, belonging to the same building as this doorway and having this unit being just the ground floor here. And the reason why I thought I'd do that is just to get a bit of variety because always we've got a doorway to nowhere. Uh, and I thought if I just took off this tiny bit of pink down here, it would make this lower ground floor bit look a bit more uh, singular. And then this pink bit, I could kind of tie into the door somehow uh, and make that into a second establishment. Uh, and given it sort of bright colours, but kind of a bit 
uh, underinvested in, let's say, I thought I'd take off the daily profit sign and sign up here and maybe turn this into a nightclub uh, and have a first floor nightclub or second floor if you're in the States, upstairs nightclub uh, with a nice sort of grumpy doorman on the outside with a queue of uh, young people trying to get in for a bit of a dance. Uh, and that would very much represent uh, real life Nottingham where we have a lot of smaller clubs as well as the bigger ones. Uh, and people could go there and have a great time. And one example of that would be a club called the Cookie Club. So what I need to do is find some sort of sign which says something like the Cookie Club. I don't really want to get one printed as such. Uh, and have some sort of funny uh, club name here to rep uh, replace that Daily Profit one. Uh, and then, I don't know, again, do I bother doing the interior? Or will the doorman with a queue outside and the funny signage be enough? But that kind of makes sense to me with the pink and sort of a bit underinvested in uh, exterior. So I'm going to say that needs a lot more thought and a lot more work. So I'm going to give that one and a half thumbs. And then we have kind of a favourite, but kind of the most difficult to uh, imagine in Brick Nottingham, which is the Weasley's Wizard Wheezes with the uh, Weasley brothers, Fred and George. Now, I think they're twins, aren't they? Yeah, so the twin brothers there. Now, I love this shape for a start. This massive round bay window is very uh, intricate and very typical of the style. And I love that they've echoed this through with the doors here and the windows above, and then this slightly different shaped window. And it goes in with the roof and everything else. So I think it's absolutely brilliant. So I love that. And I really like the bright color of orange. And I love all the writing uh, on all of the signage. And I've put all of that on, even though it represents things like wizards and wheezes. Because if what I've read, it serves me correctly, this is not just a sort of magic shop in uh, the sense of Harry Potter, but it's also kind of jokes and um, fun fireworks and things like that. And I thought, well, why not have that in Nottingham? You know, because we still use fireworks, we still like jokes, we still like sort of magic, and it can just be the sort of magic like conjuring rather than sort of flying around on a broomstick. So I thought, why not keep the entire theme and therefore we can keep these stickers uh, and we can even keep the incredibly bright and fun interior, which is exactly my style with all these boxes piled up with all the stickers on, all of these absolutely crammed shelves full of all sorts of good stuff. And this colourful uh, kind of balustrade to all of the stairways is just so amazing. It just can't be replaced, really, in my mind. Now, again, this is posing a massive problem that we're not probably going to be able to see the insides of this wherever it goes in Brick Nottingham, unless we have an open side uh, visible to us, the uh, big figures. Um, and I don't really want to do that because I've not done that anywhere else and I don't really want to start. So unless I develop a way of making this segmented that I can lift off whole floors, it's going to kind of remain trapped inside and only visible through the windows. But I don't really mind because just knowing it's there is a, a good thing. Now, for use in Brick Nottingham, <laughs> this lilac colour isn't my favourite, <laughs> I've got to say. And combined with what is a very bright orange, it's quite... Um, bold let's say <laughs> uh, so I'm not too sure on it and we've also got quite interesting but again lilac backed stickers on this side so I'm in two minds as to whether this should be in a prominent position with this uh, interesting color scheme uh, so I'm thinking this might be one that's facing in a slightly more secluded spot away from the main viewing angle if there is one. And you'll still be able to see it because, you know, the wonder of my city is that you can look at it from all different angles and see wonderful different things from wherever you are. So I think it will still be in great use. Um, the other problem potentially is this lock, uh, sorry, nocturne alley uh, in that it's very much kind of like a 2D facade. And although these buildings are designed to go back to back, so for example, this one is to go with the previous one we looked at, and they can go like that, and the roof lines match properly and everything, so it really does work all the way around. Uh, I don't really want to use them in this kind of modular style because it's very hard to incorporate well because you've kind of got to have a road on one side and on the other side. Uh, what I might do is have them 
more like facing each other or something like that and have kind of a very narrow alley like that, which is, I imagine, how Diagon Alley actually is in the films and so on. I think something like that, when you sort of think you'll be looking at it and angles all like that, will be a lot better. So I'm hoping to do it face to face rather than back to back, which does mean that this alley might not work because that actually links up with the door of the Daily Prophet, of course. Um, so that whole structure I might remove and use somewhere else. And I could use it um, right next to any one of my existing facades at the moment, and it'd be great having a little uh, nocturne alley. So that's fine. Um, and then the final consideration on this is whether to keep this large man who's kind of got a moving hat and a play feature built into the roof and sort of hanging out all of the windows. You can kind of see his body in there. This is one arm obviously holding his hat. Here's the other one on his hip. And there are actually even two legs in this bit. So do I want that brick Nottingham? Should I remove the whole man? I'm thinking I'll keep him um, because it is interesting. It is a bit different and it is a fun magic and trickery shop. So yeah, I think I'll keep it. So I am a little intrigued as to what this thing is supposed to be. It kind of looks like a big doner kebab, uh, except it's orange and um, purple. And it looks like it's sort of supposed to spin. <laughs> so I have no idea what that's supposed to be. So perhaps you could let me know in the comments. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to these two still being the proprietors of this shop. But obviously I have to uh, yellow up their hands and faces. So uh, yeah, the minifigs are even coming in great use as well. Uh, and some people ask me what I do with the other ones. I put them in a bag <laughs> for safekeeping. I might want them one day. So, yeah, I like this. It's, it's going to need probably the most work, um, but it's still a good one and a half thumbs. Right, so I've brought those four up and I've just put them on the railway lines there as a space to park them while we have a look at the available space. So my old town is kind of over there at the moment and is centred on the Brick Nottingham Castle, which is obviously raised up on Castle Rock with the uh, drawbridge going over here to Major Oak Hill. And then kind of the path goes round a corner and into the wall where we assume the city continues. Uh, but the buildings that are very medieval, are from the medieval village set. And I've got there the Crown Pub in the blue and here the tourist office and kind of replica uh, blacksmiths there as well. So that is what I'm going to try and expand. And the first bit's very clear. I've had this spare space for ages. I was thinking of uh, doing some mocks, maybe using the pieces from the Sanctorum set and a few others that I've got knocking around. Um, but I could never really get behind anything there. So that's a fantastic spot. Uh, and you can see it's 32 long between uh, here and here. But I can probably go a little bit further, actually, and make this a little alley between the front of uh, whatever we put here and the uh, Art Deco cinema that's being renovated. So one of the four builds, and maybe if I split one a little bit more, maybe that cafe or something like that. Then to the other side... Uh, I've got this green area, which I kind of wanted to have some benches on for tourists, uh, where there's the kebab van with the spinning kebab and uh, one of my many, many coffee chain shacks. Though I've only got two so far successfully in the city. I need to get on with that. Uh, and I've got my arcade. Now, those could stay on a nice sort of green area. They could be moved. But I think what's definitely going to have to be moved now is sort of in the wrong place is this arcade. I do love it, so don't worry. It's not going too far. Uh, so I might just have to put it, I don't know, the other side of the train tracks, maybe over there or next to the uh, hospital or something like that for now. Uh, but I don't think that now fits in this area. Uh, and then <laughs> only just put in place. I didn't really do a video on it because it's not really anything that I've changed. It's this uh, demolition site. So I was thinking of putting this in places that uh, were going to be built up soon. So now this is going to be built up with my Diagon Alley. I think I can move all of the demolition stuff, maybe definitely over to that bit there, because uh, it's good fun. 
Uh, so I'll move that. Now, since I'm going to move it, I may as well detonate it, hadn't I? I had never had this set until very recently, uh, and I didn't realise how much fun it was. So you can uh, put some dynamite, say, next to the building, and you can press this button, <laughs> and it completely blows it all up. So that's good fun, leaving the uh, lone toilet with leaking pipe and a rat. And then also you obviously get this large wrecking ball, which, ah, oh, do I have to hit that? Quite hard, <laughs> which you can knock over bits like that. And there's a chain you can sort of pull over other bits. Anyway, I've completely dislodged it now, but I can move all of that over there and free up this space. So then technically I've got from here all the way up to and including this whole area here. And I think I should be able to get the other three or the other two and a half in this space quite easily. But the question is, which way round? So I think the next step is definitely to clear it uh, so we've got a lot of space to work with. And I may also clear these roads temporarily just by bunching up the traffic to the left and to the right to give me a bit of space to work. Right, so this spot is clear. The arcade has gone. All of the demolition site has gone. So the demolition site is over there for now. And I've just moved the arcade over there next to the hospital for now, just as a holding position. Though I must say, I do like the uh, Space Invader being sort of highlighted against the darkness of the underside of the table. It looks almost more vivid now, so that's good fun. But um, onto the placement, I think this one, Weasley's Wizard Emporium. How am I going to grab this from the inside? I don't want to drop this with my left hand, but here we go. Uh, I think this is the hardest one to place. And because of its colours, uh, difficult in another way as well. So I didn't want this to be, for example, sort of there, because I think it's just too tall and too vivid. Uh, and I do need one kind of with its back up against the Palace Cinema. So I thought this one could be that one. So essentially, if I flip it, it would be kind of like that, and therefore would be visible as one side of an alley that we could kind of walk down here. We have another set of shops kind of facing it. And I thought that'd be really good. Now, the only problem is that we've got the very sort of blank side facing us rather than the railway line. We've also got this little space, but that'd be very easy to cover by just increasing the size of the wall on the Palace Cinema itself. Uh, but we can't really see any of the bay windows and the best features being all this orange stuff. So what I thought I'd do, though it's going to be really, really painful, is actually mirror this build. Uh, and what I mean by that is you just build the mirror image. So you just put all of the pieces kind of on the right, on the left and vice versa. And that will mean that this corner is actually kind of here. And that alley, which I think we'll have to actually remove, would be sort of here as well. But then that boring blank wall would be right up against the railway line. So if you think about this as being kind of two straight edges and then this sort of curved corner, it would be kind of straight edge, straight edge, and then the round corner joining up perfectly with this corner here. And I think that would kind of draw your eye into this alley that I'm thinking of putting here, uh, whilst also meaning that this great big tall man with the play feature would be kind of an iconic corner here that would be visible all the way from along this street. So the only problem with that is that it's a great deal of work for me to reverse all of the pieces. So I'm just going to plonk that there for now as an idea. So whenever we look at this from now on today, we'll have to imagine that this is mirrored, and that those really bright windows are on this corner here, and this blank wall is facing the railway. So then what do we want next? Well, next, I think we want this one, being the Quidditch shop. And I think this needs to go on this side as well, because it's quite tall and it's got a flat roof. 
And I think in this area, all we've got is kind of sloped roofs all around. And I just don't think it will fit. Also, it's bright pink and I think that will stand out quite a bit in that area. So I'm thinking of putting it here. And I think, again because of its height, this might be the best one to kind of face the uh, magic shop. Somewhere like that and create this lovely sort of alleyway. Now it probably needs something at the very end which won't be part of this set, just to kind of give it a focal point. Something about here, maybe a statue or a fountain or something like that, that you can kind of see from all directions because we will be able to see down this alley from the second standing hole over there. So I think that'll be quite a good look. So there we go, that's roughly what that looks like. Again, you've got to remember that this corner will be that rounded orange windowed corner if I mirror it. Yeah, and you can kind of see the Daily Profit door. And the best feature of this one, after all, is this leaning forward section. So I do think that that is probably the best orientation for that. Now, some people will point out that we're going to start blocking things, like we're going to be blocking this tower, we're going to be blocking our view of that sweat. But that's the point. We're going for many, many different uh, layers. So kind of like here, we've got the... Paradise Cafe, the shops behind, shops behind that, and even behind that we've got the facades. You can see there's so many rows, it's really interesting. And you can still see over things just by changing your perspective. So that, I think, looks quite good and quite natural. I'll have to place it so the train can still get by. Uh, and then we've got two more. We've got uh, the Ollivanders and just reaching for the... Fourth one, we've got the Flourish and Blots. Now I've tried these virtually every way round. And one thing I didn't like about having this here is that you've got the Sangreen next to the Sangreen. And although that's not a disaster, it doesn't look fantastic. So I thought this one might be the one that hops over this side and would go about, let's say, there. And the good thing about that is, because of its black sloped roof and its brown sloped roof, it kind of fits in with these. These are a bit shorter, but then they would be, because medieval buildings were a lot shorter. They're always a lot smaller. And if you're tall like me, always banging your head in them. <laughs> so I think that works well. And it also means the cafe on the corner's got a lot more pavement space in front for all of those tables. So I think that'll work really well. And what I do want to do, if I put this here, is keep this gap that I've deliberately left here so you can kind of see the trains whizzing into the tunnel. Uh, and then I can make the pub garden in front of the Crown Pub just a little bit bigger so it kind of reaches up to those wonderful book racks outside. And maybe we can put a statue or a fountain or something uh, in that area as well. But that's good because there the Sangreen is the only example of Sangreen for quite a distance I can make out. And it's a good contrast to the blue one next door. So tell me what you think of that. And that means that this one with its bits of blue. I haven't dropped anything yet, touch wood can go about here, like that. And I think that works really well, because that's a really good looking building, so I want to be able to see that kind of front and centre. And I think it looks pretty special there. Again, I'm going to leave a gap between them deliberately. I could push them right up, just like they are in a set. So they're kind of like a big long terrace, but I want it stepped back that way, because it's going to have uh, better clearance on the trains than this one, so it can be stepped back a bit, and I think that gives it a bit more interest as well. But I think the gap is important because you did get kind of little alleyways, kind of like that Nocturne Alley is on one of the builds uh, in between buildings. Uh, and I also think we need to be able to see the train just kind of flicking by these gaps uh, in between the big buildings. So I think that looks really good as well. And that kind of accentuates the alley that I'm kind of creating down here. Now this might be the whole area that I cobble. So it might be 
that the cobbles kind of start, say, about here and go up the alley, or maybe it's this whole area that I cobble. I don't know, because I will be getting rid of all these dark tan tiles, because it just looks a bit different otherwise, a bit too different, I think. And then as for this gap that we've now created, I thought I could green up this area, and now I could be have kind of a third fast food or something else, little kiosk maybe, maybe tilted uh, at that angle towards us, kind of towing in like, like Bob's Kebabs is, and maybe either space out these tables or even have a fourth little table with umbrellas. Because this uh, medieval area and the castle is the tourist area, really. So we'd have lots of outdoor tables uh, and things like that for them to enjoy. And having a nice big green area, it's just like real life Nottingham next to the castle. A lot of people go there when the weather's good and, uh, you know, sit on the grass and enjoy the weather, have an ice cream. Uh, and you never know, I might even do a Robin Hood statue here or something like that because you may have seen on the uh, recent city set that there is a statue of Robin Hood bricks. Uh, so I'll be getting just those pieces rather than just that set because I don't really like the set. And also, obviously, I've got a tram and things like that. Um, so I don't need another. It's not really the best set, that, in my opinion. It's got a lot of good things, but I've got a limo. I've got a uh, tram. I've got a town hall and things like that. So uh, I don't really need it, but I will be getting the pieces so I can build a Robin Hood statue, definitely, because there's a very famous one in real life, Nottingham as well. So I don't think I've got time today, having gone through all of that, uh, to actually embed these, do all the pavements and do all the work, because that will take quite a while. But I would really appreciate, before I do that, actually getting your feedback. So let's number them so we can talk about the same thing. So this is number one. Uh, so we've got the cafe here that we've got a lot of area for tables on and with its other half in sand green, which I think is good. So that's what we can talk about that being one. Number two, Ollivanders, which I think should go here. Nice front and centre. It's a very sort of square building, but we've got all the flat roofs you'll notice together here. So three flat roofs, but Sweat's got a flat roof and the Palace uh, Cinema has to a degree. So I think that works very well. Different colours from all of its neighbours. Number three, here with the wonderful leaning forward windows, kind of pushed in as much as will allow for the train to go past, which is why I've got the biggest carriage there. Uh, and then four, the magic shop, which bear in mind will be mirrored. So we'll have the bay window in the interesting side here, and then the uh, lot, not turn alley or whatever it's called, uh, will probably be removed entirely. And I may even put that against this wall here, maybe perched against Castle Rock, like there's a little sort of gateway into something beyond there or something like that, or even between two of those buildings over there. And that should leave me room to do a big tree here on this rail corner that we can't really fit any buildings in. Maybe a fountain here, another kiosk or something there. And then definitely a focal point of a fountain or another statue or a combination of the two down the end of potentially a cobbled avenue. So, let me know what you think. And just so you can see it from the other perspective, this is from the second standing hole. Obviously this building will be mirrored, as I've said a few times now, with its plain side facing us. But it does mean that you'll be able to see down this alley all the way until it joins up with this road and all the way down to that cinema at the end. And I think that'd be a really good view. But you can see this will be a nice older and thankfully filled in. I mean, golly, that one looks great in sand green, filling that gap from this perspective. Uh, yeah, I think that'll be a great area of Brick Nottingham. Very good. So thank you very much for watching, as always. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe. And most importantly, tell me what you think of the positioning of these four that I've done. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I'll probably be doing the really unfortunate task of mirroring uh, Weasley's wizard wheezes, just so I can get that the right way around. And maybe even uh, putting in the other ones with their proper pavements and final positions um, and reflecting all of the comments that you've given me from this one. So, see you then!